And this is where I was going to do my intro, but I am completely in shadow. So let's pack up this little wilderness camp and head back to the van. And I'll film it there, where it's a bit sunnier. I need the camera, obviously. Right, let's try this again. My channel Mispronounced Adventures, my name is Alex and welcome to Nordic Arctic Round 3. New personal record, minus 38. And if you're new here, consider checking out the rest of Arctic Round 3, all seasons 1 and 2. I shot that intro drone footage this morning. It's now this evening, but I've been doing a collaboration video all day in editing, and I've just finished, so I'm now out to do the actual normal vlog videos. So, currently near the border of Finland and Sweden, and starting to make our way south. So, let's get on with it. Right, we're on the move, and about to go across into Sweden. This is about where I am on the map. I had to go across into Sweden and I guess this will be the last time I'll be in Finland. So sad. Starting to make the, the way back down south back to the UK. I can't find the road. For the day, let's have a look. What temperature is it? Minus eight. Engine preheater is pretty much done. Let's go for it. Right, onwards south. Don't want to go home, but um, kind of need to, as it's rude not to go to a wedding you've invited to of your friends. Oh my goodness, I've just had the realization I bought a sugar free energy drink. <sighs> Man, I don't want none of that. Let's get out here. Impressive looking waterfall. Sunglasses are on because I can't see anything with the bright sunlight, blue skies and glare. Well, I'm pretty sure this only happens on the drive back because there's more sun around and, well, I'm driving south and there's a lot of sun in that direction. Sad times, leaving the Arctic Circle. That is me leaving the Arctic Circle for the last time on this trip and uh, starting to, well, I was going to say slowly, but actually quite quickly make my way home. But I've still got a bit of snow and a couple of days to enjoy. Right, it's sunny and warm, currently two degrees, about 20 odd mile away from Luya. And I'm hoping to go drive on the ice roads. I did that in the first year. That was good fun. I did, and then I recommended it to loads of people this year. Loads of people have done it this year. They were all on the other ice road, which I wasn't on last time. Go drive on the ice roads uh, this afternoon, which with clear skies and sunny, it should be uh, quite the experience. Right, almost at the ice road. Hopefully the weight limits are there. I think the last time I checked the website, it'd be updated like last week, but it's been warm for a few days, so I don't know what the current rating is. That being said, I don't actually know whereabouts the ice road starts. Like, this is the one I've not been to before, so... Uh, oh, that looks nice roady. Right, well, let's uh, see what the ice road is rated to. Please be more than three and a half ton. Oh, seven ton. Well, there's seven ton then. Let's... Uh, 
Let's do it. I do love the ridiculous idea that I'm currently driving on the sea. It's crazy. Site. I have to admit, in many ways, I find it absolutely absurd. As a Brit, I have built a van, an empty panel van, into my house, and I've driven it to the Arctic three times now. I'm currently driving on the sea. It just uh, blows my mind. And I think I've driven this up of ice road like three times now, just today, just because I'm enjoying myself going back and forth. It's fun and get some photos as well. Who would have thought this van in 2018, in two years working for an agricultural company holding bulk now it's done three Arctic winters, 19 countries, 20 countries, and I've built a business around it of taking it places to show you guys. It's absolutely mad. I would not have thought I would be doing this at the, uh, if I thought what I'd be doing in three years, four years time at the, from the beginning of COVID, this was there, uh, this was not it. It's turned out well. It is a 30 kilometer an hour speed limit. Been overtaken on the sea. Right, we've playing around until the light is pretty much gone. So let's figure out where we're going to park tonight. Powerful Northern Lights display tonight. Well, I was going to go to bed, but since Northern Lights are out and I'm so close to the ice road, it would be silly not to drive back up onto the ice and enjoy the Northern Lights. Thank you. 
bit of a surreal experience. I'm on an ice road, so I'm standing on the frozen ocean. There's the northern lights going on behind me. And I just saw a meteor as well. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. You can hear it on the camera, but you can hear the ice thumping. A bit of a disconcerting noise. Will my time lapse finish before that car gets to me? I am standing in the middle of the road. But I'm waving a torch there so these people can see me. Was it worth it? A cool little experience, right? I think I'll go, uh, go back to where I was parked for the night. Unless there is a perfect storm coming later on. The following day, when I need to figure out how to shoehorn a few of the collaborations I've not done into the final video of the series. Right, so since I've built the whole bike rack to bring the bike up here, I've been so busy, I haven't really had time to go out the bike. So I'm gonna go out on the bike um, on the Lugia Ice Road. And normally when I'm filming the bike videos I've done in the past, I do it with uh, an iPhone. So I've got the iPhone on the handlebars. Well, not actually, this is a 12. The one I'm filming on is a 14 at the minute. But normally I film on the iPhone and it just works. And iPhones have amazing stabilization, which is why I use them. It's just very simple. And the practicality of the reason, the reason action cameras exist. So when you fall off doing something action-y, you don't, destroy your phone. I don't own any action cameras, or I didn't until now. So this is the little collaboration part of the video. I've been sent one of these. And a Casso Brave 8. And well, it's a budget action camera. It's significantly cheaper than your GoPros or your Osmos. But on paper, it's got good features. Not gonna go through the whole specs. Go on their website if you wanna look at the specs. But I'm gonna get it a go on, and it'll be interesting to see on a, on a action video, doing the bike stuff, if it is as good, better or worse than using my iPhone. So let's have a quick look. Well, there we go. Get that off. Get the batteries charged up and figure out a mounting system for the bike. He also sent me the extra accessory kit. Right, mounted, sort of see it. It's very wobbly, so I'm not really sure how well this is gonna work. I might have to drop it down to just on there pretty quickly, but we'll give it a go. First off, I need to get that pumped up. When I filmed the video for this originally, I rode it through a field with uh, loads of thorns and I punctured both tires. So that one's got a slow loop in it. But, as many people know I like my gadgets, I got sent by Hotu their bike pump, which appears to be flat. So whilst the little portable one, which is convenient for my bike pack, is flat at the minute, they did actually send me their far larger Air Master as well, which is been quite convenient. I have used it quite a bit now, which can do from bike tires and footballs all the way up to car tires and inflating and deflating stand-up paddle boards. Well, whilst the portable one is flat, the one I use in the van to do the van tires, although the screen is flickering now, you can't see it, is charged. So let's spin it to bike. Not that you can see that because the refresh rate's wrong and get it pumped up. I'm gonna to have to show this inside, but a nice little dial to rock it down. Then we're gonna go for 30 PSI. So, the tile's on one PSI. To find out more about their kit, check out the link in the description below. Right, let's put those out. Turn it on and go to the ice road. So, here's a quick test of the camera. I kind of found out very quickly that the mounts supplied with it are pretty crap and here's a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison of my riding footage from the action camera versus the phone and whilst the terrain and the mounts are different so it's not necessarily an equal test generally the footage was pretty unusable but even if you freeze frame it the quality of the iPhone's footage is a lot more crisp and realistic colors over the one from the action camera 
Next, a quick audio test. And on this train, and snow doesn't help, I did find the audio quite unusable. It's actually work as a bike. Although it is somewhat saveable in post. It's actually work as a bike. It's actually work as a bike. Switching over to the iPhone footage from a different trip. Audio wise, raw. Yeah. What is this moron doing up here? And audio with post production. Yeah. Doing but generally, any sort of riding like this, I'll be using a lapel mic for far better audio quality. That was a bit of fun. Well, after being annoyed with the camera not really working for me and the mounts oh, causing me problems, it's time to switch back to the normal camera, ride back to the van and actually get onto the ice road. Obviously not a glowing review from me, but I was there to test it. It's a budget action camera, but it has just some good features. Unfortunately, I didn't have the best mounting option for the testing day and Definitely not going to be a new primary camera, but having a secondary action camera will be helpful for some shots in the future. But I'll give it one last go and I'm going to put it on the chest mount whilst I'll switch back to my normal filming rig with a phone based on the handlebars for the rest of the video. All right, let's try attempt two. So I've got, I've got the iPhone now mounted on the handlebars. And I've got the chest mount on the uh, Brave 8 and we'll see how well that works. I don't always like shoehorning collaborations in like this, but sometimes an opportunity comes up which could potentially help the channel and improve it for the future, but doesn't always work out, but I still have to make some content about it. What is this? Oh. <laughs> Bit slippier than I thought. That was a bit of fun. Ugh. Basically, I'm going to conclude that the mount which came with this kit is crap, and I like the one I've got for my other bike. So I'm going to scrap doing all of this filming stuff and uh, do some sexy drone shots. What you don't really see on the last drone shot is I had been riding around for a couple kilometers and the drone was running out of power so it decided to fly back to its home point which because I had ridden a few kilometers was quite a distance away and I had to race there because it was going to land in the middle of the road and I didn't want a car to run it over. One of the things I do like about this action camera or any action cameras is I quite like the first person look. I don't use it in my videos maybe I'll have to look into that for the future. Right, time to uh, leave. I got back in time for my consultation by a few minutes. Bike's packed away, back of the van's tidy, so time to get out of here and really start the drive home. And now it's time to start the long drive back to the UK. And this time I'm gonna take a bit of a different route. Although this evening's park up turned into a dead end by accident, and we'll pick this up in the morning. All right, good morning. Ended up getting stuck. I drove into a snowy car park a little bit deeper, so I spent about half an hour, hour and a half, digging myself out and getting the chains on. So I got a bit of my kit wet, so I put it in the drying room and I've just realized the vent closed. Or down, down there. That vent's closed and all the air gets pushed into the shower room. Which means the shower room is currently 46.8 degrees and 8% humidity. Oh God. Ooh. Right, well, I'm just over halfway down Sweden and it's been a uh, day driving, but I've chosen to do something different. Most of driving back, I am gonna get a ferry from Gothenburg to, in Sweden, to Kiliv in Germany. The reason about that is that ferry, tomorrow evening, is 266 pounds. Uh, that's including a cabin, 
on it as well for and for the van. It's overnight, so it's 15 hours. To go via Gothenburg to the same distance in Germany, it's like 780 kilometers. And then there'll be the toll bridges from Malmö to Denmark and then the other one in Denmark. So that's at least a 70 or 80 pound in toll fee. So it's gonna be cheaper to take the, the ferry overnight. So I can drive through the day, take the ferry overnight, and it gets it at nine in the morning and then drive through the day. Rant Adventure recommended it to me. He did it on his drive back. So I thought, why not? Oh, it's a sad sight. No snow. I think my world's a little bit less happy when there's no snow. I'm quite a fan of it. Well, the ferry's booked for quarter to six tonight. So about three and a half hours, three, three hours, 45 from Gothenburg. So should be all good. All right, let's um, get a move on. Let's go. I think it might be time to take the grill cover off. Pull over in a second, get the grill cover off and let the engine breathe. Oh. To be fair, I've not seen it yet with um, what the new bar looks like. Yeah. There we go. This grill cover might be end of days. I mean, it's just using this insulated material so it's not really designed for being outside and battered but it's worked well it's just three winters it's finally fallen apart bloody horny trucks right 20 kilometers to the port Ladies had lane four, and I've got a picture of motorhomes and caravans. Nice, nice. This my ship. Right, parked up, trying to pack a little overnight bag and go find, pack an overnight bag. That was like the most adult thing I've said in a while. I mean, really, I just want to go grab a power bank, power bank, and my laptop and my iPad, actually. Right, let's get that sorted. Right, van all locked up. Let's uh, find the stairs and get out of here. 618. Oh. Well, not bad for just tonight. I've gone for an economy cabin, as you can see, because I have only half a pillow. Full pillow cover, but only half a pillow. Shower head. Always use opportunity for a free shower. Let's go have a look. First person to order a pint on the ship. Winning. Right, paid for the buffet. I've already had my fish course. And now I'm on my meat course, but well, they've got unlimited beer on tap as well. This will be a joy. Let's pick this up the following morning after enjoying the unlimited beer. We thank you for travelling with us, and we will wish you all welcome back. Right, we are docked. Time to go to the car deck and drive the entire, well, and drive from Germany to Calais. And we're off. Right, never mind, quickly set the GPS. Uh, eight and a half hours to get to Calais from here, which I will probably do the best I can to do the majority of it today because it's only- In 280 yards, turn left onto Kestris. Well, this is consistently rude throughout this trip. Well, the weather is just delightful. Leaving the van to get a bit of a fleet. But it's now, six o'clock and I've only just realised it's six o'clock because it's still bright. Over the, for like the last two months, the time is about four o'clock, it's dark, it's dark. So uh, it's a bit of a surprise to be back in the light again, but it's so late in the day. Right, goodbye wet Netherlands. Hello, uh, wet Belgium. Well, reached my park up about half an hour from Tunnel Tunnel and it's been raining quite a lot today, but there's been a spot on my windscreen which hasn't like cleaned which is, you can probably see that mark there. And I was really hoping it wasn't a scratch, 
but I've just had a look at the wiper and the wiper managed to disconnect itself. So it's been rubbing that bracket for hours. So I've scratched my windscreen. I'm hoping that'll polish out. Well, morning, final morning, and time to head to the Channel Tunnel. Yeah, day 61. It was warm last night. It was eight degrees I think, when I got here. Didn't have the heating on for the first night of this trip, and it was still 17 degrees in the van when I woke up. So uh, let's, let's get out of here. Well, it is the end of the trip, really. Sad times. Never long enough. I could have stayed up a lot longer. I'm all, overall happy with it. It seemed, it seemed to go very, very quick this year, but new personal record didn't hit my, my magical minus 40, unfortunately. But minus 38, not a number to uh, take a stick at. Found myself in the middle of a NATO exercise, that was entertaining. I guess round four will be next. Happy to do it again. This, though, might be final trip for Yeti. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I've got some plans. Maybe this will have been the final trip, which is the fourth European trip three winter Nordic trips and one general Europe trip. So this may have been the last trip for this van or the last trip for this van be owning it because I might look at selling this van. Well, you know, it's about five years old, 147,000 mile. But I feel it's still an advertising age and distance. Looking at the idea of building a new all wheel drive transit for an even bigger adventure, and bigger series, which YouTube and my road job will help fund. But let's carry on and let's get to the Channel Tunnel. Okay, yeah, just me. Okay. One passport this year, I've not lost it. I have lost my passport. Well, there it is emergency British passport. Uh, I wish I knew. I've kept it in my pocket the entire trip not hidden it somewhere super secret and safe so that I never find it again. Bonjour. This person's going so slow. The fun bit of the train is driving fast through it. Literally the fun. And well, that is the end of Arctic trip round three. Thank you very much for everyone who's joined. This season has already been far larger in the amount of videos and the amount of people watching than seasons one or two, but I can't thank you enough. You guys, the ones who have followed it by watching it and making the channel grow so I can turn silly adventures like this into somehow my business and livelihood. So I thank all of you who have watch this season. I also thought this would be a nice place to film an outro, so I presume I have made it back to the UK. I'm still currently on the ice road, for the outro at least. But if you do want to support the channel in other ways, do consider looking at some of the links below. I work for Roma, they're a UK lithium battery company. I do their consults, but I've also got affiliate links for their batteries. Brand ambassador for Auto Term, for their diesel heaters and water heaters, as well as a few other links. But really, it's all about you guys, and I hope you've enjoyed the content. And well, Arctic Round 3 might be over, but I've got bigger plans to come. Thank you very much for joining me. Cheers. Bye.